All right, on to the next series. So we just finished talking about how to change symbology and make things look nicer. No, don't ever go by my example here because I'm just showing quickly how to do a, an example. But um, then what I want to show in this one is how to bring in your GPS data from field maps. So first things first, make sure you are signed in at the top because that is what's going to access the online um, data that you have. Then in catalog, this catalog tab, you might have to go down at the bottom and choose catalog if you have several things open. You're going to click on portal. And from the portal, there's this little man with um, the cloud behind it. That is your content. So here is my two folders that I've set up to, to work with. And if I double click in, then I'm going to find my web map and I'm going to find the data that I had been uploading and working on. So if you have several feature layers, you're going to see several of them. If you only have one, you may only have one. I cannot bring a web map onto this, but I can bring the feature layers onto it. So I'm going to select my, my feature layer and I'm going to drag and drop it over. It's going to take a moment to add the data that you have collected. And then it's going to start popping up. So now I can go back to my regular catalog. And in here, I've got all my data points. So you can see how they've added them here. And this one is showing up right here. So notice that if I go back to my portal, I go back to the thing, the, the word here is going to match here. So you have to look for that. That's, the, that's number one. I am going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to drag and drop it up to the top because I really don't want it to be kind of lost in the middle. I want my GPS data to also show up above all of my other polygons and everything. That's more important to me. So now I'm going to click the little down arrow and we're going to see all of these show up here. So if I want to make things a little bit easier for myself, I can make these ones smaller. And these ones are from my digitizing, right? So this is from the previous exercise. These are all from my GPS data. So now if they look funny, if they're not in the right spot, that is okay. Just leave them as they are. I can right click on this if I want and go to properties and there's not much I can do in here, right? So there's only general, which doesn't allow me to do any, any changes. So we're just going to leave them offset and that is okay. I'm just trying to show you the difference between these two. So now if I wanted to change the symbols, for example, in trees, I'm going to right click. I'm going to see what my attribute table looks like. And it looks like I've got some different things I can show here. So I'm going to take advantage of that. And I'm going to symbolize my data based on that. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to symbology. And now I can use unique values because I used words, right? So type is one of the words. Go down. So type is what I want. I'm going to add all my fields. No, nope, I don't want that one. And I'm going to add unlisted values. So we can see here that these ones are unlisted. So I'm going to select both of these. So this one and this one. And I'm going to press OK. So now they're there. So if you can't find them, you got to push this little plus button and it'll ask you what you want to do. So here I've got coniferous and deciduous. So maybe I go here. I'm going to type in my gallery tree. And I have a coniferous, so I'm going to choose that one. Choose my properties to see how big it is, so it's super tiny. Change this one to 30. Apply. Then I can go back. And deciduous. I'm going to go to the gallery. Type in tree. And I can choose, say that one, and I go to properties, and I'm going to make this one bigger because it's super tiny again. Apply. And then once I close that, now you can see where I've collected the different types of trees. And so you're going to symbolize things differently from each other. So as I mentioned before, like here I've got light posts. I don't have much for trees. But um, 
I have gone around and collected benches, for example. So the benches here are going to be different from the benches I've collected here. So if I go in here, per, actually, I'm, I know that I have a attribute, so I can right click, double check what my attribute says. And I have cap capacity and material. So if I wanted to use capacity, I could right click, go to my symbology, and I could use, for example, graduated colors, it has my capacity. Unfortunately, everything that I have right now is only um, it's only one one value, but if I go there and maybe I want to change that, I want to change the color, purple, or maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I want to go to gallery and I want to go to bench. Maybe, well, maybe I'll just use a rectangle instead. So that one might be easier. So there's my rectangle. Change my properties. I don't want it black because that's boring. I like the hatching and I'm going to go blue to white. Looks good. Apply it. And then I can see where my benches are that I collected with my GPS data. So as a side note, if you are looking to put in labels into your map, um, you can use your attributes that you've put in there. So if, for example, if I go to class building, for those of you who wanted to do this, I'm going to turn on label. You see these weird numbers show up and that's fine. So I right click on the class building and I'm going to go to label properties. And in here, all I'm going to do is change this last bit to name because that's the name of the feature class that I'm doing, the field, not the feature class, the field. And now you can see that it's changed here. Now you can change how it looks. You can change all kinds of things. So if I want to change this, and maybe I want it to be that. You're going to see that it changes. I hit apply and now it's going to show differently. So again, if you're looking to do labels, that's how you would do labels. There's many, many different ways to be able to combine all of that together. Um, and there's many ways to do labels on top of everything else. You can add things to it. You can change the line it's on. There's just like everything that you can do. So um, lots of advanced stuff that can happen, but you don't need to do that. That's only if you were wanting to and you needed a little bit more of a challenge and you thought that it would add to your map.